How are you doing, my friend? Okay, thank God. So, what's um, your name, first of all? My Jesse Burke. Jesse Burke. Burke yeah. So you are Jewish. Yeah. And what 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 kind of Jew are you? I'm Orthodox Jew. Okay. Well, Haredi, Hasidic one. Yeah. Sort of. Which one? Well, Hasidic is part of Haredi. I guess I'm somewhere between them. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, what did you want to ask me today, brother? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, before you're talking about an agenda issue, you talk about LGBTQ. I don't know what you talk about gender. I didn't speak about that today, but oh, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. I have in the past. But you were saying about someone who left Islam, who was born. Well, that's really bad. You actually said the worst people in the world. I'm wondering yeah. what worse than murderers and rapists. I mean, how bad is it? But I was wondering if... Well, it's as bad as it is in Deuteronomy, which also talks about an apostate in your book, right? right. Let's, let's be clear. That okay. it talks about the apostate, you can kill them in the house. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Just as bad. Yeah, yeah so uh, it's a clear... Just as bad. So we both, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> We're on the same page. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering, and I asked my fellow Christians that, and I asked plenty of Jews that, and many others, is there room for a person to be a good person and fine? And find a path to God that's not yours. No. Not through Muhammad peace of It's a good not, question. Uh, and, and why? Why? Look, no. look, the Quran clearly says, in the deen Allah al-Islam. The only acceptable religion to Allah is Islam. Okay? okay? Allah has created the human being. You believe that? I believe that. Allah has created the human being and he has made that human being Free willed. In other words, this human being has a choice between good and evil. That's our belief. Yeah. Although there are some who believe in predetermination. So we believe in predetermination, but we have a compatibilistic position, which is, as you know, both godly determinism and human free will. They coalesce in a certain manner. Okay? So we believe in the idea of human free will. Now, what I'm saying is, human being has a decision to make. The Quran says clearly, we're not going to punish anyone except if we send them a prophet or a messenger or a messenger this is chapter 17 verse number 15. so islam has created the human being on something called the predestination or uh, sorry the predisposition this predisposition is a proclivity an inclination a receptivity to believing in god you are already born like that the Quran is called dhikr, which means a remembrance, okay? So what it is, is that the Quranic story is this. You are born believing in God, and then the Quran has come to remind you of your beginnings. Similar to a child who has been departed from his parents, for example. And in fact, Ibn Taymiyyah, one of our scholars, he gives this very example. He says the fitrah, or the innate predisposition, is like a child sucking on the breast of the mother. It's something which comes naturally, yeah? It's not something which is even rational from that. It's ultra rational. You don't even need to have an argument in place. It's something like when you put your, your, your hand on a fire, that reaction, that carnal, visceral, human reaction is the same kind of reaction, that level of instinct that you believe in God. Now, having said that now, if a human being does not believe in Islam and has never been exposed to it, we don't say that this person will perish and be ever have an eternity of uh, punishment. What's going to happen to him? We, yeah, it's right, never heard of yeah so some scholars say that in the Day of Judgment, they will be given uh, an independent test. In fact, there's a hadith to that effect, okay? They'll be given an independent test on the Day of Judgment. Wait, between Mount and Olives and... Between Mount and Olives and Temple Mount? And that farm no, it doesn't say this in the, okay. in the hadith, I don't think so. You know, okay. Unless you know a hadith, I don't. Yeah. But, no, yeah, so... Uh, they will be given an independent test on the Day of Judgment. But the point is, is that what is is that this process of a human being listening to the Quran, being reminded of his purpose, is referred to in the Quran as Nur ala Nur. Nur is basically light upon light. You have the light of the fitrah, the light of the human inclination to believe in God, and then you have the light of revelation, and then they intermingle in a most delicate and precise of ways. But you do agree that there are two different things. If you talk about inclination to God, I hear. Inclination to, I don't know, pray exactly five times a day. Or say exactly the words, la ilaha la ilaha la ilaha la ilaha Or yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. That's not something someone's born with. I agree right? that. Yeah, exactly. He has to hear it from someone. Absolutely. So, so what we distinguish between is the theoretical Islam, praying five times a day, even who the Prophet Muhammad was. The, 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 the character of Prophet Muhammad We don't claim that someone is born believing in this stuff. Well, our claim is only one, which is that someone is born believing in submission to God. Now, Islam is not. Islam can exist without the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it had existed. I mean, uh, when the Prophet Muhammad didn't exist, you had Moses, you had Jesus, you had Abraham, you had Noah, you had prophets that came before, 
And Islam at that time was not about following the Prophet, it was about following those Prophets. But you can't be a Muslim today, since 1400, without believing Muhammad, right? Okay, like that you can't is, be a Christian. No, I understand. Like a, no, I understand. But what, just to, just your yeah. point was, it's, I'm, when we say Islam, we're, we're not saying anyone is born, anyone is born believing the five pillars of Islam. That's not our claim at all. Yeah, Islam is Ist Islam, which is the idea of submission. By the way, talk about the five pillars, right? Okay. A righteous Christian, Hindu, I don't know what. Salah, he prays. Sadaka, okay, he gives charity. He um, basically does it in a non Islam way. You don't accept it, right? You won't consider that following. He has to do it in your way. That's the only that's the only path for salvation to God. What was your name again, bro? What? Jesse. Jesse, let me tell you something which I think you already know. Maybe you're advocating a universal perennial position of Judaism, which, by the way, most Hasidics don't agree, agree with. Okay. But let's, let's just. True. Yeah, yeah. I agree. In fact, the 95%. But let okay, me just. I'm, yeah, include. I'm representing myself. Okay, no, no problem. Not uh, yeah, yeah. Not but uh, what I want to say is that every ideology by its nature is a refutation of another ideology. In other words, every ideology claims the truth another ideology doesn't have. So, so clearly. If Judaism is any different from Christianity and Christianity is any different from Islam, then there are some refutational aspects of Judaism which can be extrapolated, which would go against the nature of Christianity or Islam and vice versa. Meaning this idea that we believe in one truth, which is sent by God, is not something uh, remarkable or exceptional about the Islamic discourse. Almost, the reason what, think about it cl clearly. Any ideology, in order for it to be thusly understood, as a demarcated ideology, distinguishable from other ideologies, must have aspects of it which are differentiated from other ideologies. In practice, the, for sure. In, pr in theory as well. Well, what, with the Agar Masjid, Agar Synagogue, or Church, or Temple, for sure. What exactly no, in I theory, think? in theory. Well, but see, the theory doesn't have to... Uh, look, the, 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 um, sorry, right, you have the four um, schools, right? Something, right? You can choose. Okay. And valid, right? Yeah. And they're all okay in your eyes. Yeah. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's four distinguished schools, differentiate, but each one for you is a path to Allah. Okay? okay. I don't know if you'll include the Shia, thing, but, but no, inside yeah, the Sunni, okay. yeah, yeah. Right. So you do have that. I'm just stretching it further okay. and saying there could be ways to Allah that may be okay, let, differently. I understand okay. what you're saying, but can I retort? What I was going to say is that all four schools of thought are operating on the same basic premise, which is that we want to believe in God and the Messenger and follow the Messenger. Okay? Now, the, just to let you know, it's a bit complicated, but I might as well just mention it. Yeah, the Osulis, the, there are a group of scholars referred to as the Osulis who who delve into something called the principle of extrapolation. There are two camps of Osulis. There are some of them called the Musawwibah and others called the Muhattiah. So even in the situation where you have the four schools of thought, the Musawwibah say all four of them are truths in and of themselves. The Muhattiah, which I the position I take, they actually say this. They say, although all four, of, all four schools of thought are legitimate from the perspective that they're trying to follow the Prophet and they're, they are putting forward a jurisprudential method which is systematic, actually there's only one truth and one falsehood. And they base that on the Prophet's hadith where it says, If a mushtahid does ishtihad, which means to employ an extrapolation method of jurisprudence, if he, if he is successful, he gets two rewards. When akhta, and if he doesn't, if he fails, then he's only got one. Now the point is, is the hadith is clear that you can make a khata or you can you can err on the side of you can err on the side of uh, falsehood. But still, because you're operating within the paradigm of Islam, you'll be given a reward. The point is, if you're not operating within the paradigm of Islam or the uh, the idea that the Quran and Sunnah are the major primary sources, then you'll be disqualified from that. So the the extent to which uh, taking different pathways to truth is something which is a legitimate discourse is something very clearly and cleanly defined by Islamic scholars to the extent to which even those things where there's a difference of opinion among the four schools of thought can be considered this is true and this is false that, so in other words if I'm a Hanbali and I say look uh, you know Are what I'm Hanbali? yeah so if I follow the Hanbali school of thought I follow it for convenience purpose no I'm not <laughs> from Egypt but if I if I follow the Hanbali school of thought and I, you know, follow a particular ruling, yeah? Now, I cannot say this is 100% true in the same way that I can say that Quran and Sunnah is 100% true. I cannot say, so if, if someone says a Maliki or a Hanafi comes to me and says, actually, I believe X, will you believe in Y? 
I will have to, as a person who's following that madhab, unless I have done my research myself, but if I'm under the authority of those particular schools of thought, I'd have to concede that his other method or his uh, school of thought is as legitimate or even more legitimate than mine in some cases. I have to be agnostic here. I cannot be a follower of the Hanbali madhab, but say, no, mine's true and your one is false. But you don't so, 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 so that's where the difference lies. Whereas as a Muslim, I will say my religion is true and your religion is false. But so with, with the madhabs, your example of the madhabs, I have to maintain a degree of agnosticism to the truthfulness or lack thereof of my particular position, unless I have done the extrapolation myself. Whereas with, with, with um, religion itself, I don't have any agnosticism. I'm very clear what's true and what's false.